Hello, my dearest family. My name is Adam Livingston, and we are currently living through the greatest wealth transfer in human history. If you properly understood what's going on with Bitcoin and Bitcoin treasury companies, you would probably be losing your mind in a great way. But that's why I'm here, because I am your number one source for Bitcoin and Bitcoin treasury company analysis. If you want to stay on the cutting edge and get the best possible analysis on this incredible monetary revolution, I implore you to like this video, hit subscribe, and share this video with the people in your life who seriously need to wake up. This will be a fun one, folks. I will be going over a new metric that I invented to value these companies, the price compression velocity. I came out with this on a thread that went viral a few days ago on X, so YouTube people follow me on X, that's where my best stuff is. Feel free to click the link in the description and give me a follow. Remember, this is not financial advice, this is financial entertainment. Before we go any further, let's just acknowledge something that nobody on CNBC has the courage to say out loud. Traditional valuation is completely dead. Price to earnings? Trash. Discounted cash flow? Please, those models have more assumptions than a gender studies thesis. Fair value? That's just a polite way of saying, we don't know, but here's a spreadsheet to justify my bonus. We live in a marketplace that has completely divorced itself from any rational link to actual business fundamentals. Look around you, Costco, which is literally a warehouse that sells pallets of toilet paper, 40-pound bags of trail mix, and $5 chickens that somehow violate every law of supply and demand, is trading at a 50x earnings. We've seen NVIDIA price like it's going to single-handedly invent digital immortality. And then you've got the rest of the clown circus, SPACs, meme stocks, private equity zombie portfolios, and tech companies trading at 30x revenue while losing money at scale like it's some kind of Olympic sport. The entire market has become an endless recursive leverage machine that prices narrative velocity, not cash flow durability. Now here's where most people screw up. They keep trying to use broken models, PE ratios, PEG ratios, DCFs, to value companies that exist inside a completely different gravitational field. Bitcoin treasury companies are not businesses, they're monetary black holes. They don't sell products, they don't produce recurring software as a service revenue, they don't offer margin expansion guidance either. They do one thing, they convert fiat into Bitcoin, amplify balance sheet torque, and feed on the structural incompetence of every other capital allocator on Earth. The market doesn't know how to price this yet, so it just screams bubble, it screams premium, it screams overvalued, because it's using the wrong tools. And that is why I am here. We're not going to talk about traditional valuation today, we're going to talk about how to actually measure capital reflexivity in a Bitcoin treasury company only using a few metrics. Because once you understand how fast these companies can vaporize their premium through Bitcoin per share growth, you'll realize most people are not bullish enough. Let's begin. Before we go deep into the bloodstream of premium compression, we need to lock in one core mental model because this is where 99% of analysts completely lose the plot. Bitcoin treasury companies are not traditional companies. They don't operate like Apple. They don't operate like Costco. They aren't selling products. They're not optimizing margins. They don't have revenue synergies or customer churn rates. They operate purely as capital conversion machines. Now, the market, being entirely unprepared to analyze this, attempts to price them using one primitive input, the net asset value multiple. You'll often hear people saying, it's trading at a 3x NAB, it's trading at a 6x NAB, it's trading at a 10x NAB. That's insane. This multiple is what we call the MNAV, the multiple of the net asset value. If your Bitcoin holdings are worth 1 billion and the market cap is 5 billion, you are trading at a 5x MNAV. But here's where the amateurs get blown out of the water. They assume the premium itself is static. They believe that a 5x or a 6x MNAV automatically means the company is overvalued. What they fail to understand is that Bitcoin treasuries operate on reflexive time decay. The premium isn't some premium overhang, it's a dynamic fuel source that can be actively vaporized via Bitcoin per share growth. The real question is not how high is the premium, the real question is how fast can they burn through it? Because unlike almost any other sector in public markets, Bitcoin treasuries have the ability to self-redeem their own multiple by continuously growing Bitcoin per share faster than share dilution expands. And that brings us to the next piece of this framework, BTC Yield, the operational engine that powers premium compression velocity. Let's move forward. Now we arrive at the engine because none of this premium compression matters if you don't understand where the fuel comes from. BTC Yield is the core operational metric that powers everything inside a Bitcoin treasury company. If MNAV is the starting point and premium compression velocity is the speedometer, BTC Yield is the engine block. So what is BTC Yield? Very simple, BTC Yield equals 
how fast the company is growing its Bitcoin per share. It accounts for new Bitcoin purchases, it accounts for share dilution, and it isolates the only thing that matters. How much more Bitcoin each share represents over time. Let me say this as plainly as possible. A company that dilutes its shares but aggressively stacks more Bitcoin can still increase Bitcoin per share. A company that doesn't dilute but barely stacks Bitcoin has no engine. And a company that dilutes faster than it stacks, well, we don't want to talk about them. BTC yield is the ultimate Bitcoin treasury performance metric. It captures the operational aggression of management, the capital structure dynamics, the efficiency of arbitrage strategies, and ultimately the reflexivity of balance sheet growth. Now here's where it gets extremely powerful. BTC yield directly powers our two valuation weapons. It feeds into the MNAV months to cover how long it takes to burn through the premium, and it drives premium compression velocity how fast the premium is getting vaporized each month. No BTC yield equals no premium compression. That's why this entire framework obliterates traditional valuation thinking. You don't care what MNAV multiple someone is trading at in isolation. You care how much Bitcoin per share growth they're generating relative to that premium. The market thinks these companies are expensive because they can't measure velocity. I'm here to teach them what happens when you apply temporal mechanics to balance sheets. Now let's put it into motion. Time to introduce MNAV months to cover the clock that measures how fast the premium gets annihilated. Now that we understand BTC yield is the engine, we can introduce our first real diagnostic instrument. This is where we start doing what traditional analysts are too lazy or too scared to attempt, applying time functions to market premiums. Because again, the size of the premium doesn't tell you much, the question is always how long would it take to fully burn that premium down to zero. And that's exactly what MMC measures. It answers the question, at my current Bitcoin per share growth rate, how many months would it take for my market premium to self-liquidate? Here's the formula, MMC equals the MNAV multiple divided by the BTC yield multiple times the period length in months. Why use multiples instead of raw percentage growth? Because Bitcoin per share growth compounds exponentially. Using multiples accounts for compounding correctly, otherwise you end up like most analysts, applying linear formulas to exponential machines. An example, suppose a company has a 6x MNAV. The BTC yield multiple is 1.796x, which is around 5% monthly compounded over 12 12 months. Plugging that into the formula, you get about 40 months. At this growth rate, the company will fully vaporize its market premiums in 40 months purely through Bitcoin per share accretion. No earnings required, no product growth, no cost cuts, just pure monetary absorption velocity. And this is where people who scream overvalued completely miss reality. A company trading at a 6x MNAV might sound crazy, but if it can vaporize that premium in 40 months, that's not a bubble, that's a reflexive monetary reactor. And this is only half the story because while MMC tells you how long it takes, it doesn't tell you how fast you're burning premium on a monthly basis. For that, we turn to the most lethal metric in the Bitcoin Treasury Quants Lab, the premium compression velocity. Let's go deeper. Now we arrive at the velocity metric, premium compression velocity, or PCV, the single most important number in this entire framework. PCV tells us one thing, exactly how fast the company is burning through its market premium measured in full NAV multiples per month. Let's walk through this carefully. You've already seen that Bitcoin treasury companies trade at a market NAV multiple, say 6x, 7x, 8x the NAV. And earlier we calculated MNAV months to cover the time it would take to fully burn that premium based on current BTC per share growth. PCV now combines those two into a pure velocity output. PCV equals the MNAV minus one divided by the MMC. The numerator tells us how many fully NAV multiples of premium exist. The denominator tells us how many months it would take to burn through them. The result is the monthly speed at which the company vaporizes its premium. Let's walk through the example shown here. The MNAV is six, the MMC is 12. That gives you a PCV of 0.4167 NAV turns per month. The translation is every single month, this company is burning down 41.67% of a full net asset value multiple. This is the critical shift. The market sees the 6x NAV and says that's expensive. We see 0.4167 NAV turns per month and say that premium is evaporating so fast, the market can't even price it accurately. PCV gives you three superpowers. Number one, you can compare companies across wildly different MNAV levels. You can normalize growth velocity between companies. And you can see who's actually operating efficient capital engines and who's simply inflating their share count. This is balance sheet reflexivity quantified. PCV is not a snapshot. It's not a ratio. 
PCV is time decay speed applied to premium. All right, now let's make something very clear. Static nav multiples are for the financially illiterate. This is where the vast majority of Wall Street, YouTube clowns, and Twitter chart lords completely miss the mark. Here's the problem. Static multiples are backward looking. They're just a snapshot of today's price relative to today's Bitcoin holdings. They completely ignore what's happening inside of the machine. Imagine you walk into a nuclear reactor, take one single photo, and you declare you understand the thermodynamics. That's what these analysts are doing. You're looking at a dynamic, self-compounding capital reactor and trying to value it like a vending machine. PCV destroys static multiples because it injects time and velocity into the equation. PCV doesn't care how high the premium is, it cares how fast the company is vaporizing that premium. If two companies both trade at a 6x MNAV, one may have zero BTC yields just sitting there collecting premium like a bloated meme stock, the other may be growing Bitcoin per share at hypervelocity, actively compressing premium every single month. Same multiple, entirely different capital engines. That's why PCV is superior, it's forward-looking, it isolates operational velocity, and it tells you who's actually building reflexive torque and who's sitting on dead capital. This is why the market will adopt PCV as a KPI that matters for Bitcoin treasury companies. Because once you can measure how fast a company self-redeems its premium, you stop playing price tag games and start playing reflexivity velocity. And now that you understand why speed matters more than snapshots, let's pull the full system together by showing how PCV and MNAV months to cover operate side by side to build a complete diagnostic framework. Now we tie the entire system together because here's the ultimate truth about Bitcoin treasury valuation. You need both time and speed. MNAV months to cover gives you the time horizon. Premium compression velocity gives you the speed. Think of it like this. MMC is your countdown clock. PCV is your accelerator pedal. The real insight here, if you take anything from this, is that premium size itself becomes irrelevant once you control for velocity. Two companies can trade at the same multiple. To a static multiple analyst, they both look expensive. To us, one is a monetary black hole eating its premium in real time. The other is a sitting duck waiting to be repriced. This produces two possible states. A high PCV with a low MMC means hyper-efficient premium arbitrage machine. These are capital absorption monsters. They turn dilution into Bitcoin faster than the markets can model. These are the black holes that you want to own. Not financial advice, of course. Do your own research, you damn rascal. A low PCV with a high MMC means that these are dangerous, reflexively fragile companies. They rely on multiple expansion and market euphoria. If BTC yield slows, they're dead. These are capital structure ticking time bombs. This is why PCV and MMC together form a complete diagnostic framework. You're not just looking at valuation, you're diagnosing the health, reflexivity, and future capital efficiency of the company. Do not measure these companies like businesses. Measure them like balance sheet reactors operating on reflexive time decay. And now that you fully understand how these metrics work together, let's run the full system live on a real company, MetaPlanet. Here's the raw data. The MNAV is a 5.96x. The Bitcoin yield multiple is a 225.36%, which converts into a BTC yield multiple of 3.253x. We're analyzing these over a 12-month period. Now, if you apply the formula at current Bitcoin per share growth, MetaPlanets would eliminate its entire market premium in roughly 22 months. Let me repeat that. The market sees a 6x net asset value and screams bubble, but this company is burning through its entire premium in less than two years entirely through operational Bitcoin per share growth. We know how long it takes to burn through the premium, but how fast is MetaPlanet vaporizing nav multiples each month? Time to calculate its premium compression velocity. This is where the system becomes lethal. Now that we've calculated MetaPlanet's MNAV months to cover at 22 months, we can now calculate the pure velocity at which it's burning through its premium. The inputs are the MNAV at 5.96, the premium multiple at 4.96 NAV turns, and the MMC at 22 months. The translation is MetaPlanet is vaporizing approximately 0.23 NAV multiples every single month. Let me pause and make that very clear. Every 30 days, nearly a quarter of an entire NAV multiple is getting consumed. The market premium that everybody fears is getting reflexive burned at hyper velocity. This is balance sheet torque measured as speed. Meta Planet's capital absorption engine 
isn't just operating, it's accelerating. It is self-redeeming its own valuation premium faster than static models can even process. This company is running a recursive capital engine that's burning down its premium so fast, it might as well be shorting its own multiple. This is why PCV obliterates traditional valuation frameworks. PCV forces you to measure monetary reflexivity in motion. It allows you to compare companies across any premium level, and most importantly, it shows you who's actually efficient versus who's just sitting on paper gains. MetaPlanet is not expensive. MetaPlanet is simply running one of the most aggressive Bitcoin per share growth engines on Earth and the market doesn't know how to price reflexive premium compression yet. This is where we're going. The old world is finished. The old valuation models, dead, irrelevant, functionally useless. The institutions are still trying to value Bitcoin treasury companies using legacy frameworks, like their software as service businesses or real estate investment trusts or dividend-paying boomer stocks. They're not. They're reflexive balance sheet engines. This is why PCV and MMC are not alternatives. They are the only logical language that properly describe these entities. PCV becomes your primary KPI. How much premium is being vaporized every month? MMC becomes your forward risk diagnostic. Together, they give you what static multiples never could. And they position you light years ahead of the analysts still playing 1990s financial model cosplay. The market will learn this. Institutions will adopt this because capital always moves where models finally fit reality. We're not early because we're buying Bitcoin, folks. We are early because we're learning how to model Bitcoin capital markets as they actually operate. And PCV plus MMC will be the foundation for how Bitcoin treasury companies are valued as this asset class fully institutionalizes. This is not just new math, this is a new financial epoch. And I am here to guide you through it every step of the way until we reach the Bitcoin Citadel. Class dismissed.